Okay, now U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris is in Ghana for the first leg of a three-nation Africa tour. The U.S. saying it's looking to strengthen diplomatic and other ties with the continent. The trip to Ghana, Tanzania and Zambia comes after a December summit that was hosted by President Joe Biden in Washington between U.S. leaders and African leaders. Now, for more on this visit to the continent, I'm joined now by Professor John Stramlow, Honorary Professor of International Relations at the University of Witwatersrand, or WITS for short. Good afternoon, Prof. Welcome to today, and thank you very much uh, for your time. I see Kamala Harris landing in Africa with promises of greater investment for the continent. Yes, that's exactly right, and, and she's wanted to make this trip, uh, Dan, for some time. But of course, things keep cropping up like the Ukraine war and other distractions and the voting in the, in the US Senate where she was a tiebreaker during the, the first uh, year and a half of the presidency. So um, she's now o overdue, but, but you know, the first uh, African American uh, vice president, the first uh, female vice president, and she really feels an affinity with Africa. Her, her, her father was descendant from uh, Africa and her mother from India, and she's married to a, a Jewish guy, the second uh, gentleman. And it'll be interesting to see how uh, African hosts treat <laughs> Doug Emhoff. So <laughs> it's a quite an interesting meeting, but it's being cast as a as an anti-Chinese meeting, and I don't think that's exactly right, even though it's on the agenda. Yes, uh, the, the, we'll talk about the, the China factor shortly uh, uh, with you as we analyze this, uh, th this visit. But I mean, we've seen Anthony Blinken here on the continent a few months ago, and uh, that was even ahead of President Matamela Ramaphosa's trip uh, to, to Washington last year. Uh, and now she's coming on the back of that. Joe Biden has not yet visited Africa. I'm sure very soon in future he just might because of this um, drive by America, it seems, to really ramp up its relations with the continent. Yes, that's true. And it must be seen in the domestic politics. Uh, America is a very polarized country right now, as you know, between the rural and the urban and the um, make America great again crowd, the, the white racists that Donald Trump championed. And uh, the contrast between this administration and the Trump administration is really dramatized by the interest that has been shown in Africa for a constituency that is absolutely vital for the election of a second term for Joe Biden, as it was in getting him elected the first time around. And so therefore, it, it, is, it is very much incumbent upon uh, uh, the administration to show that they really mean business about uh, improving the relations with Africa. 16, uh, before uh, Kam Kamala Harris came, 16 prominent Americans came here, uh, and including Linda Thomas-Greenfield, who I know pretty well, the UN ambassador, who's also African-American. Yeah, I mean, no matter how you look at it, uh, the, the influence on the continent of, of China is actually growing. And each time we look at such visits, like Kamala Harris's visit now to Africa, we look through the lens of, uh, is this part of countering uh, 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 that influence by China on the continent? And uh, I mean, it might be a discussion, as you said, between herself and the president of Ghana, for example, Nana akufo Addo. Well, y it's an element, uh, Dan, it's an element. But um, uh, when I mentioned Rinda Thomas-Greenfield, when, when uh, she was ambassador in, in Monrovia in Liberia, uh, she worked very closely with the Chinese mission there. Uh, the Americans would do the software for public health and hospital development. The Chinese would build the buildings and they would do the hardware. A and it was a compatible uh, sharing uh, for the good of the Liberian people. And I still think that even though uh, Xi Jinping with his wolf warriors and his need to bolster his domestic support by saying that the U.S. is surrounding uh, China in a containment policy that is on the verge of a new Cold War and we really have to do balance of the power of politics. That's 19th century, Dan. I mean, America is becoming a majority minority or a minority majority country um, of uh, very diverse, as is the world diverse.
Yeah. Okay. As we conclude, Prof, we don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but I just want to uh, ask you this question because I read your article, your opinion piece about this U.S.-China tensions where you are arguing and you are setting out how Africa can avoid being caught in a new Cold War. So what should Africa be focusing on very briefly, Prof? It should be focusing on public health, on education, on economic development, on private investment and public investment and infrastructure, all of the things, including science and technology. And because African agency was so important when South Africa was taking a leadership role in the continent, it can be again and it should be again, and I hope it will be again. And you can read this uh, argument I make in the conversation. Thank you very much. Professor John Stramler from the University of Wetzlar.